Looking for the latest Kenwood Double Din Car Stereo for your vehicle with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and HDMI input? This could be the one for you. Kenwood has recently released the DMX 7709S. This aftermarket vehicle head unit comes with some good sound out features. So hang with us as we fully review this radio. Hey, it's Josh from Break Your Stereo and Performance. Welcome to the channel that reviews the newest in automotive upgrades like car audio, performance, suspension, and more. Because we don't drop stock. And if you're like us, where stock just doesn't cut it, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Kenwood, what more needs to be said? These guys have been around since the dawn of car audio and is synonymous with sound quality and reliability. Now, full disclosure, this radio is almost identical, if not identical, to the JVC KW-M780BT, which we reviewed about a month ago. But we have many customers that feel more comfortable with the Kenwood name. What can I say? We're creatures of habit. Either way, both are great radios, and we're going to do this review anyway. So we're going to go over the product features, do an unboxing, demo, and then we'll give you our pros and cons along with our overall rating. Okay, let's go. All right, so this is a digital multimedia player with AM FM tuner. It does not play CDs or DVDs. Media playback with MP3, WMA, and ACC music files, plus high res wave and flag files. This is a 6.8 inch capacitive touchscreen display. There are electronic viewing angle display adjustments, which we'll go over during the demo. This is a full double din. Smartphone features include wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto, which include charging, built-in Bluetooth for music streaming and phone calls. This is 50 watts times four peak power, 22 times four RMS. This has a 13 band graphic EQ, digital time alignment, volume link EQ, which boosts frequencies that are affected by road noise, two and three way crossover settings. Expandability includes Sirius XM ready, tuner sold separately. This has a rear USB input with front and rear camera inputs, rear micro HDMI input, along with rear analog 3.5 millimeter AV inputs that can be configured for a third camera. Now that HDMI input can be used to mirror your phone, but the cables are sold separately. On our outputs, we have rear analog video, and on the RCI outputs, it's six channel, four volt, pre-outs, front, rear, and subwoofer. Now this radio is iDataLink Maestro compatible, which retains factory features in a wide selection of vehicles that display engine performance data, climate controls, and more. Also steering wheel control ready, adapter sold separately. Okay, let's unbox. All right, so we have the GPS antenna that is for when you're using your navigation apps, separate Bluetooth mic, parking brake wire, all right, this does come with a cage and a trim ring, which is nice. Not all double din radios come with that. All right, so we have our hardware here along with our owner's manual and warranty card. And then our main wire harness. All right, so as you can see, this does have a shallow chassis, which is good for installation. Easier on installation because when you're putting all these wires back into the dash, you don't have to cram them. All right, here's our cage that I talked about here. So it just gives you different options for mounting instead of just having to figure out how to ISO mount this. Um, if you have a vehicle where an ISO mount is not an option, you've got the cage there. All right, so we have our 6.8 inch screen here. We do have some buttons here on the side that are flush on the back. Let's take a look. Main harness is here. Your fuse is right here. This is your GPS antenna input. You have your backup camera input. This is a video output if you're hooking up an additional monitor in the rear, let's say. And then you have your AV input. Now this is a 3.5 millimeter cable and you will need to purchase that separately. RCA outputs, again, four volt, front, rear, and subwoofer. AM FM antenna. This is your front view camera input, parking brake wire, and your reverse wire. Microphone input. Sirius XM plug is here. Rear micro HDMI input. I down link maestro input is here and here. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out this radio. Here is our home screen. All right, now if you touch here, this will give us all of our sources. Okay, now you can't scroll like this. You actually have to go hit the button there. All right, as you can see, uh, we have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth Audio, Telephone, USB, Radio Series XM. We have the USB mirroring. Now, if you have an Android phone and you want to mirror, you can definitely do that. We'll not do it with an iPhone. You must use the HDMI. Okay, I do have the HDMI hooked up right now, so let's go ahead and tap that. 
And as you can see, this is what is going on on my phone. Another thing, you can't control anything from here, all right? So you have to control it from the phone. But if you wanted to watch your favorite streaming app. All right, so let's check this thing out since we're here already. Now, on the JVC, when I did the demonstration, I actually went and I adjusted the picture first. Um, but that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it anywho. Go back home and then I'll hit the setup and I'm gonna go to display. And then I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down a little bit and I will adjust the screen. Okay. So I've got a lot of brightness. I'm gonna take the brightness down slightly. I'll give it a little more color. Okay, and I'll leave the tint alone. Uh, take the brightness to maybe 10. Give it a little bit of contrast. All right, and then let's go back to our HDMI and see how we're doing. Okay, that's a little better. Um, you know, it's 480, but again, it's a small screen, 6.8. I'm definitely happy with, with the way that that looks. To me, it's acceptable. If it was 720, if it was high definition, of course it's gonna be better. It would be nicer for it to have that. Alpine um, and some other radios out there do have 720 at this size, and those radios look incredible, especially that Alpine. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back. All right, uh, and then the next screen is your AV input, standby, and then those are your OEM features, and that will be integrated with the iDataLink Maestro piece. So if you do not have the iDataLink Maestro hooked up, that will not work. Okay, so let's go on the setup and see what we got. So here we have our audio, and then we have equalizer, sound effect, fade balance, crossover, time alignment. If you scroll down the page, you have volume offset. Okay, I'll just go through these briefly. 14 band EQ here, you got presets, flat, bass boost. Okay, a couple users there pop, easy listening, top 40. Okay, so if you want to just, just go to user and then pick your band, move it up and down as you like. You have your base EXT, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Then you have your subwoofer level here as well. And this goes up to 10, okay? And probably down, negative, yeah, probably 10 as well. Okay, oh, oh lower. All right, well, it goes all the way down to 50, okay. All right, um, let's go sound effect. All right, so here we have our loudness, bass boost, uh, drive equalizer, space enhancer, supreme realizer, stage EQ. Stage EQ is, is good. All these other ones, I would normally just leave at flat unless you're just running, let's say, stock speakers and you're trying to get the most out of them. And using these may make those sound a little bit better, but if you've got an amp, you definitely want to leave all that flat, okay? Um, so stage, we'll take your front stage, where it's at, you can bring it up lower to middle to high. My suggestion for you is just to listen to some music and see where it sounds best. Basically on all of these, you know, but again, if you have an amplifier with some aftermarket speakers, using some of these features will introduce more distortion. So I'll just keep that in mind. Next, balance of fade, that's pretty straightforward. And then you have speaker and crossover, all right? So there's that. Here you can select the car, compact, full wagon, minivan, SUV. Okay, you can also pick the location of your speakers. So in this case, we have our front speaker selected, and then you can select on dash, under dash, upper door area, lower door area, okay? And then you can do this with uh, both the front and rear speakers. And then you can also select the size speakers uh, that you have. So in front speakers, let's say you have six and a halfs, select six and a halfs, and this goes down to probably three inch, I would imagine. Yep, three and a half inch and then as high as seven by 10, okay? All right, perfect. And then you have tweeter size, small, middle, large. And then you have your crossover points. All right, so your crossovers points are 30, probably to 220, a little bit higher, 250. And then you have your slope, 6 dB, 12, 18, and then 24, right? Yep, okay, cool. All right, so you have that for your front, and rear and your subwoofer across the board. All right, we got time alignment. I'm here, these are just kind of presets for listening position. So you can do front focus or driver or passenger or rear. You can also adjust. You can set here, okay, the distance between whatever seat you're trying to adjust for and the speaker itself, front, rear, and the subwoofer. Also, uh, subwoofer adjustment is here, subwoofer delay. So it looks like it's just done in milliseconds. And then you also have a gain adjustment here as well. So let's move on to display. All right, here you have your dimmer. You can customize this home screen. So it comes default as black. You got this black and white gray-ish backdrop, a couple blue backdrops, 
space backdrop here. Pick whatever you like. You can upload your own image so you can customize that. OSD clock demonstration. I'm just gonna turn that off. On once or off, home screen. You can adjust the home screen here. If you wanna move icons around, uh, you can do so here by selecting, okay? And then uh, we have your viewing angle, which we talked about earlier. So depending on where the radio is in the dash, you can adjust the viewing angle, okay? So that it is brighter for you in the driver position. Input, you have your front camera, rear camera. All right, it's pretty straightforward stuff. I'm probably gonna have your interruption you have to turn on and then your, uh, how long you can have the interruption for. So you can set it at five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, okay? We'll probably have guidelines, I would imagine, there we go. So we have our guidelines here, and we can set up guidelines for that. So that's only on the rear, not the front, okay? System, all right, so we have our language clock, format, time zone, blah, 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 all good there. All right, so let's go back here. Okay, we'll take a quick look at Apple CarPlay. Now, on the screen, I know it looks kind of funky, uh, but that's just the shutter, so no worries. When you're actually using this thing in real life, you do not have those lines, okay? All right, so you do have scrolling here. You have your phone call, music, maps. Okay, everyone's kind of familiar with this already. Use maps, search here. Um, you can either activate Siri for an address or type it in either way, okay? The maps that come on the iPhone, you can go Google Maps or you can go Waze as well. And then you have messaging apps that you can use like Telegram, uh, WhatsApp, and also your standard text messaging as well. All right, now, Android Auto. Okay, here is Android Auto. All right, uh, whenever you plug in your Android phone, for whatever reason, it goes directly to Google Maps. That is your home button there. That'll take you to the applications that will work on the screen of your radio. So again, and just like the iPhone, you have your main categories, which are mapping or navigation, music, phone call, message, okay? All right. Okay, pros and cons, and we'll start with the cons. The downside to the screen is the resolution only goes up to 480p. And it is 2022, almost 2023, wired CarPlay and wired Android Auto. I'd like to see it wireless. Okay, but that's it. Now the pros. Now this radio has excellent sound quality that the Kenwood is known for. High voltage output, DSP controls, EQ, time alignment, and crossovers. Identalink Maestro compatible, two camera input, and the ability to add a third camera if needed. And then of course the HDMI input, which is a great touch to this radio. As far as our overall rating, we are fans of Kenwood and the addition of the HDMI input along with the sound quality and DSP features puts this at the top of our list for radios at that 450 level. Despite not having wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, we still give this radio a four and a half star. Now, if the resolution was better, I would probably give it a five, but unless you're avidly watching videos on this radio, it probably won't be that big of a deal. And since it's only a 6.8 inch screen, it definitely does not look pixelated. Okay, so for more information on this radio or to purchase it, we'll leave a link in the description below, taking you directly to the webpage. Now remember, we do have financing available. Good credit, bad credit, no credit, all credit is good credit at breakerstereoandperformance.com. Simply add to cart, pick a financing option, fill out the application, get approved, and we'll send your gear out to you ASAP. Okay, that's gonna do it. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'm Josh with Breaker Stereo and Performance. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.